Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. Yesterday I was talking to my second child, Finn, who is having a little bit of a rough re-entry into their sophomore year. Um, they're a little overwhelmed with some of their schoolwork and in order to help out, I made some suggestions. All four of Finn's classes are language classes. There's advanced French, um, uh, I think intermediate Greek, beginning Latin and beginning Italian. And I was like, well, either lower your standards or maybe drop a class. You'll always have an opportunity to learn um, languages sometime in the future during your lifetime. And Finn was like, but I have all the resources and the teachers here. I thought that was a really odd statement. As a lifelong learner, I too want to learn as much as I can. I want to know as much as I can about all of the topics that I am curious about. But I also realized that there, there are other conflicting demands on my time that create some constraints, making it so that I, I can't learn and know everything that I want to right now. Nearly every day for the last couple of years, I've spent, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes on Duolingo, learning mostly French and Spanish, depending upon whether we were going to go to Europe or we were going to go to Mexico. Last year, when my son Adam and I decided to take a trip to Italy, I started learning Italian because, of course, I wanted to be able to, you know, not speak look like the locals, but at least not look like a dumb American tourist. And then recently, my husband Zeke and I have started talking about a possible trip to Portugal next year. And of course, I started doing Portuguese on Duolingo, which let's just say it's proving to be a little bit more challenging, even though it looks a heck of a lot like Spanish. I would absolutely love to be able to spend copious amounts of time learning languages so that I could speak fluently when we go to the various places that we go or meet people, you know, even here in our own hometown. But I realize that that's um, not possible when other things are demanding my attention and my time. I don't know where the phrase, you can't teach an old dog new trips tricks came from, but I absolutely do not agree with it. I'm 53 and every day I learn something new. I've played tennis since I was a kid. I picked it back up as an adult about 18 years ago and I play tennis regularly. I've been taking um, tennis lessons once or twice a week for the last couple of months. And just about a month ago, I learned that at the net, when I am playing doubles, I should be focusing on the other net player. Never been taught that. But let me tell you, that little piece of information has been a game changer, no pun intended. And I'm now a lot more effective at the net. So Finn used to be my video editor for these um, videos. And when my little snarky sidekick uh, went off to do their own thing in college, I lost my video editor. And Zeke has been very reluctant. And so a couple weeks ago, he taught me how to use iMovie to edit my own videos. It's been great. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And now I don't have to rely on any of them in order to get these videos out. As I've been relaunching Piloting Your Life, the book, I decided to do some ads. And so one of the author platforms um, made it, it, created a tool to make it super easy to put out some Facebook ads. So on Friday, in just a matter of minutes, I figured out how to set up, uh, set up everything, put together an ad, and schedule it so that it should be running out on Facebook and reaching about 169,000 um, women's fiction readers uh, over the course of the next week. I honestly don't know how I would exist if I wasn't learning something new every single day. Whether my son Adam has realized it or not, he has chosen to be a lifelong learner as well. Well, he wants to be a collegiate professor, so I guess that just kind of goes with the territory. But recently he got a full-time job at his local Ace Hardware in Denver. And when he doesn't know something, he has to go ask one of the old guys how to do something so that he can then turn around and teach his customer or explain it to the customer, thereby giving the really good service that he's aiming for. I think this is fantastic. My favorite part though, is that he's really enjoying it. Yesterday I was playing tennis with a gal who's in her early thirties. We had just met, we'd never played before. And we were talking about what, what it is that we do. She's in HR for tech, but she got her master's in education and was um, teaching, uh, I think first graders, third graders, and fourth graders as she was going through her master's program. 
I mentioned that I was kicking off um, my speaking engagements and joined an, a platform called Innovation Women. And she's like, wow, she's like, I just can't speak publicly. I'm not a natural at it. And I said to her, I said, well, I guess I just don't look at it as something separate like speaking publicly. I look at it as something where I tell stories and I educate other people. So it's a lot less intimidating than thinking about being up in front of a big crowd and having to speak on a topic that you've memorized. Um, it's, it's more about education, which should be something that she'd be pretty good at given that she used to teach. And really the only reason she gave it up were because of the parents. Plus I told her, most people are not natural public speakers. It's something that is a skill that you have to learn how to do. And I was confident that if she was interested, she too could learn how to do it and be comfortable doing it. This Friday, I'm giving a 90 minute workshop to a cohort of life sciences startups from Finland, Sweden, and uh, Norway for the Nordic Innovation Group on US commercial and regulatory strategies for medical device, diagnostic, and digital health companies. This is slightly outside of my wheelhouse and I'm gonna have to do a fair bit of research and research, reach out to some of my colleagues and I'm 100% guaranteed to learn something in the process. And as we know, if you learn something and then you teach others, it become you become even more knowledgeable uh, about that particular topic or piece of information, which I'm pretty dang excited about. I'm also slightly terrified, but just as excited as terrified, so it should be just fine. So if you haven't gotten the message yet, you're never too old to learn something new. Um, as I've said in the book, Piloting Your Life, make failure your second favorite F word. Um, so that means as long as you learn something from an experience, if it doesn't quite work out the way that you'd expected, then it is not a, a failure. And with that, I'd like to know what is it that you're learning? What is it that you're trying that's new? Uh, or what are you trying to improve at? Uh, drop me a line at pilotingyourlife at gmail.com or drop a note in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. In, and if you are not already a subscriber, please like and subscribe this video. And if you think there might be some somebody else who could benefit from them, please share with them. I really am trying to build my audience. And uh, I really appreciate any sort of help. So thank you. And with that, take some risks, let go of perfection and have some fun.